Fresh off the heels of the 7th anniversary of the launch of No Man's Sky, Hello Games, in a move that surprised me if no one else, revealed their new game, Light No Fire, at the 2023 Game Awards show, in a trailer that lasted 1 minute and 30 seconds. And I just wanted to talk about the details, so let's get right to it. It's going to be an open world fantasy style action adventure RPG, developed and published by Hello Games, and a few of the finer details are, it's a multiplayer game, so maybe like an MMORPG, and it's set in a high fantasy world the size of an Earth, or bigger than Earth maybe. You get to explore this huge planet with multiple playable races. The game will have many different playable races, but to name a few that I've seen from the trailer, we have humans and what looks to be otters, and of course rabbits. Since we're here, I'm going to go on record as saying there's going to be a ton of rabbits in this game. If Final Fantasy XIV Online taught me anything, it's that rabbits will be chosen if given as an option by like 90% of the gaming community. And before Final Fantasy XIV fans take to the comments, yeah I know, the Mikote weren't technically rabbit people, but they are fluffy and have extended ears, so if it walks and quacks like a duck then it might be a rabbit. What about unique skills though? Different races to me need unique skills, that's just the way it's supposed to go, so don't let me down Hello Games. Forms of travel include mounts, flying mounts, and boats. It is a crafting system that I hope has some depth to it and that it includes shipbuilding. No Man's Sky's crafting system is good but it just scratches the surface so I'm curious to see what they can do here. We got mountains. They made a big deal out of the size of the mountains in the interview. I just know it better be amazing Sean. I better be floored and flabbergasted by the size of these things by how much they hyped it up. Rivers are also mentioned by name and I got excited, they look really good here. For all its glory, the No Man's Sky engine must not understand flowing liquid physics because there are zero streams or discernible rivers where the water actually cuts through the land, it leaves a bit of immersion out of the equation that is procedurally generated planets. I fully expect both of those elements to show up in an update in No Man's Sky at some point. The game looks phenomenal though, especially after considering the graphics from No Man's Sky, though still beautiful, are starting to show their age after 7 years. This brings the graphics engine which looks to be an upgraded version of the one used in No Man's Sky into the next generation. The soundtrack is epic though, which should come as no surprise to anyone who's played No Man's Sky or any of the other games from Hello Game Studio. They care about and prioritize sound quality in all their games that I've played. The gameplay wasn't really on full display in the trailer. Though you can see actions like wood being chopped and carried and houses being built, there are no indications as to what gameplay mechanics will be involved. We'll just have to wait to get gameplay footage before we can fully talk crap about it. And we will. We saw characters navigating the world by air, land, and sea a la No Man's Sky style. Though they showed combat, no combat system was shown. So no word on what that's going to look or be like at all. I imagine they'll do a simple action based combat system like a Legend of Zelda game, but part of me is holding out for them getting super in depth like with Vanguard. Can you tell I really like that game? Alright so there are a couple topics I wanted to address here in this first impressions and the first one being Light No Fire reminds me of Vanguard, like I mentioned before Saga of Heroes and Arcage for that matter. Vanguard had flying mounts, like dragons and it had a pegasus in the game, a red nosed reindeer for Christmas. It had boats in the game as well where you can sail the seas, have ship battles, wind and water currents, ship builders and shipyards. I can kind of see that happening for Light No Fire, so I'm super excited to see what they can do if they can pull all of those aspects together into a cohesive system. That would be great. Um, my second point would be that it reminds me of Arcage with its gliders and the artistic direction. So artistically the game looks to be more of an eastern take on high fantasy instead of the more medieval fantasy direction that most American MMOs take. Which is fine with me, I dig both, but that's just what I see. Alright, so the next thing I want to bring up is does it look like No Man's Sky? Yes, but more polished, deliberate version of No Man's Sky and that's not a bad thing. That's actually a really good thing. Hello Games has tried and true tech that they've perfected over time with the No Man's Sky engine and this game steps it up a notch or three for me. With top notch procedural tech and a pretty stable engine, there's no need to reinvent the wheel here. Because they aren't building it from scratch, the game should be less buggy than something brand new. Less time making a new engine means more time focusing on great content and developing a good story, which a game like this definitely needs. And with just one planet, we should get a super detailed world. 
All right, so the last thing I want to touch on is other trailer tidbits like inventory packs and visible inventories. It looks like everyone had a pack on their backs. I'm assuming it's inventory space for the character since they seem to be different sizes, shapes, and types. They may hold varying amounts of items or maybe even item specific bags. This brings to mind visible inventories for me. We have bags of different types and sizes with different attachments on them. We also have character models that show different gear attached to different points on characters. There's a lot of elements that say inventory may be physically visible. Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 had a system like this, but I think it was too taxing on the system at the time and didn't make the cut for the 2.0 reboot. But it added a lot of immersion to the game whenever I saw it because you could instantly know what someone had on them. Well, you could instantly know some of the things someone had on them just by looking at them. The giant ogre at the end of the trailer moves just before the cutoff. It looks to be an NPC that's possibly a part of the story in some way. I don't know. It was just cool to see. It looks like otters are in the game and swim a little bit differently than other races. Or maybe the animation just looks more effortless. Regardless, it's yet another way to differentiate between races. And I hope you listen to Sean. I like that. There was a huge octopus in the underwater scene that looked pretty cool. Don't know if you saw that. It didn't seem to be a threat at all, so maybe like other animals, it'll be some kind of pet at some point, like in No Man's Sky. And lastly, just a side note, but I'm hoping we get an awesome story with cinematic cutscenes that narrate the story's more important moments. I'm curious to see what the Hello Games team comes up with if they do go this route. I think they can create something truly memorable. All right, so what do you guys think? You agree, disagree? What did I get wrong? What were your thoughts? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.